I, I don't know why, if you're Kirk Cousins, when the franchise number is 24 million, why you would accept anything less than 24 million. You can debate whether or not he's worth that. They're going to have to franchise tag him, and that looks almost inevitable to me. And then next year at this time, for them to franchise him for a third time, the number would be so outrageous. He could potentially hit the market, hit the free agent market in his prime with the Redskins wanting to re-sign him at that point in time. Kyle Shanahan, who's coached him in San Francisco, who would be after him. And you have Sean McVay with the Rams. If Jared Goff doesn't go great, you know he likes you. I mean, that's a dream scenario if you're Kirk Cousins. Well, that's assuming that you know that you're going to have a great year this year that helps your cause from a negotiating standpoint. If not, you sign a long-term deal. You have, what, like $60 million guaranteed? That's more than 24. Well, I look at it this way and say, okay, the worst-case scenario is you just completely fall flat on your face. But I don't think Kirk Cousins would look at it that way. Well, he did at the second half of the season. But I mean, he threw yeah, almost 5,000 yards I, and all that. I mean, like, he's... To me, I think he's pretty confident with the pieces he has around that he can be successful. Worst case scenario, he falls flat on his face. Over a two-year period, he walks away with $44 million. Here's the thing, DJ. If you look at Kirk Cousins and, and, and the team knowing that they're not going to be able to do a third franchise tag, right? Yep. Wouldn't it be to your advantage or wouldn't it be in your best benefit looking around in the draft, looking at free agency, looking at guys that may be available to come to your team to be a quarterback, to understand, learn, uh, digest this system of Gruden, wouldn't it be to your best interest to try to get a long-term deal? So you're saying it's not really the team. It's him that wants to hold out and get tagged. Well, I think the team doesn't want to pay him that huge price. That's, they that, want to that's get, what they I don't understand. Why not? Like, what else is out there? Like, what else do you have to say, this is why we're not paying Kirk Cousins or getting him on a long-term deal? Well, I think they're pretty confident with the infrastructure they have in place there with their offensive line and some of the skill position players that some other quarterbacks could potentially be successful there. Now, I still think that they want to get Kirk Cousins for one more year, another prove-it year. But, man, if he proves that's, it next that, year, it's going to cost so much money. That doesn't make any sense to me. It makes any sense. so much money. We saw this year in the Super Bowl how important quarterback play. We saw for the Atlanta Falcons. We saw for the Patriots. How important quarterback play, elite quarterback play, like when the game's on the line, when you need a guy you can count on or put your team on your back, when you need a guy to make a play, regardless of the scenario, I just don't think like the infrastructure but, in Washington is here, that great here, where you could say. Here's the problem, though. This is the way I interpret it. There's an ice cream place you can go and they have different different sizes, right? One is like it. And the next is love it, okay? <laughs> they like I know Kirk Cousins. You're talking about. Right? I don't I think they have the love it that they want to commit long term to him. They you. want him to prove it for one year. So to me, they think he's good. I don't think they think he's great. That's I, I,